Thank you for inviting me to be part of this meeting. I'm sorry not to be there with you in person, but I'm glad for the opportunity to connect in this way. It is a privilege to be with you. Often in public health, we find ourselves talking about shortcomings, about the many ways we as a society have failed to shape a world that is truly healthy. My comments today, however, reflect what is fundamentally a success story. Our success in reframing the public conversation around the social determinants of health. Over the past 25 years or so, we have seen increased focus on the social determinants of health. There is a growing awareness that health is more than doctors and medicine, that it is in fact a product of the social, economic, environmental, and political conditions in which we live. We in public health have long known the importance of engaging with these conditions to support a healthier world. In recent years, this awareness has become more prevalent outside our field. Policymakers, industry leaders, the media, and the general public are all starting to see the necessity of a focus on the social determinants of health. Now, this is truly a success, a result of public health's patient work spreading the word about what matters most for health. The COVID pandemic also did much to elevate an awareness of the social determinants of health. During the last few years, we saw how the virus did not affect all populations equally. Some groups faced elevated risk driven by conditions of social and economic marginalization. This has motivated a focus on the social determinants of health as a political priority. We have seen this, for example, in the Biden administration's push to provide economic relief during the pandemic. And in the ongoing conversation, about the historical and social roots of racial health gaps. Now, this is all to the good. It's a necessary and overdue refocusing of attention towards the core drivers of health. Yet, while a social determinants agenda is indeed necessary, I am increasingly convinced it is not sufficient. We need to look beyond the social determinants to engage with the bigger picture of health to create a healthier world we wish to see. In some ways, this may seem like a call to do what we have already done. After all, what picture could be bigger than the social determinants of health? Social determinants are foundational, structural. They are the air we breathe, the water we drink, the places where we live, work, and play. Our social networks, cultural norms, politics, power, and corporate practices. These forces represent the bedrock of population health. And what is deeper than bedrock? To my thinking, the answer is twofold. First is the intersection of these foundational forces within complex systems and across the life force. Second are our values, the ethical and emotional concerns that shape how we engage with the foundations of health. Between these two focus areas is a vision for the future of population health, one which builds on our social determinants focus towards a new phase of our collective mission. Let us first consider the intersection of social determinants in a context of complexity. For a long time, health was seen as linear, as kind of an equation, which positive and negative influences were added and subtracted to produce a given health outcome. We now know health is far more complicated than that, a product of the combined shaping power of the conditions in which we live, rather than a neat set of discrete influences. Yet some of the linear thinking still characterizes how we engage with the social determinants of health. We still find ourselves thinking at times of factors like politics, money, social networks, and the environment as separate siloed influences. The truth is they are deeply connected, constituting an influence greater than the sum of its parts. And we need to start seeing health through this lens. Consider the following example. Imagine a man has a genetic predisposition to an illness. While the risk is inborn, it is susceptible to a range of external factors, such as diet, weight, smoking, access to prophylactic medication. The degree to which he can influence these factors in his favor depends on his income, education level, healthcare, and the political forces that shape access to those resources. This network of influence is dynamic in flux throughout the man's life. For example, education would likely have an outsized influence early in his life, shaping his capacity to choose well beyond risky behaviors like smoking. Later, politics will play a key role in determining whether he has access to healthcare. Supporting the men's health then means looking at everything, everywhere, all at once, to quote the title of a recent movie. In the past, our focus on elevating the profile of social determinants of health has led to our engaging with the determinants individually, aiming to isolate the contribution of particular determinants to particular health indicators. I would argue that the next level of analysis would be to engage with complexity itself, with the interplay of forces that shape health, rather than the study of these forces in isolation. The social determinants of health do not exist in a vacuum. They are part of a dynamic interplay, a push and pull of influence, and this dynamism should be our focus in an increasingly complex world. Now, this is challenging, and there is much to do to develop the methodological and conceptual approaches to do this right. I have previously with colleagues written on, of the need to identify causal architectures, and to adapt methods of system science to answer questions of complex determinism that integrate life force and multi-level perspectives. All of that remains true, and I would refer to papers and books on these topics. But now I also want to talk here about another set of forces that should be a core part of our thinking about the determination of population health. I want to talk about the underlying values and principles that could and should inform 
how we approach questions about the dynamics and systems that shape our health. I do so out of a recognition of the fact that as we embrace the complexity of the determination of health, we are upping the ante. We are now considering a fuller range of forces and more comprehensive set of experiences. And that requires us to think perhaps harder about how we approach these forces to the end of understanding better how to create health. Just as the forces that shape health do not exist in a vacuum, our engagement with them cannot be reduced to an isolated set of disinterested choices. Rather, our choices about health are inextricably shaped by what we value. The cynical view of values is that they are incidental, rhetorical window dressing for what we do. But I think the opposite is true. Values are in fact central to the moral and emotional core of our work. I've long admired the book Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. The novel is about how the choices of individuals ripple through time and space to ultimately shape the course of history. Core to the story is how seemingly intangible values like love, mercy, and the pursuit of justice can have a powerful, decisive effect on the sweep of our human story. Here's a quote from the book that I particularly like. It goes like this. Power, time, gravity, love, the forces that really kick ass are all invisible. This suggests the power of values. Values are at the core of all we do, as fundamental as gravity, even as they remain invisible. What we shape values, the choices that we make about health. In our pursuit of health, we are presented with many options. Will we choose to prioritize the pursuit of equity? Will we be open to new ideas or close-minded? Will we place supporting human rights and dignity at the heart of all we do? Before we can answer, we must ask ourselves what we value. Our values can then guide our efforts towards a healthier world. With this in mind, I would like to suggest seven values-based affirmations that can help shape our pursuit of health. First, we are committed to a diverse and inclusive public health community. To be most effective, public health should reflect the populations we serve. This means supporting a diversity of identities and perspectives within our field. Second, we are committed to equity. Often, what looks like fairness in society can mask deep, persistent injustice. This is particularly clear when we engage with the social determinants of health and see the health disparities that can exist between groups. Equity means leveling the playing field so no one is excluded from the resources they need in order to be healthy. Third, we value a plurality of ideas and perspectives. Public health thrives when it's supported by the best ideas. Welcoming a plurality of ideas and perspectives can help sharpen our thinking towards being ever better at what we do. Fourth, we are committed to the pursuit of truth. In recent years, we have seen much conflict between truth and narrative. There is a temptation to do what we can to make our understanding of the data fit our preferred narratives around the world. Yet doing so would be a disservice to public health, which depends on understanding the truth about the forces that shape the health of populations. A commitment to the pursuit of truth is necessary to ensure the integrity of everything we do. Fifth, we are committed to human rights, emphasizing freedom and autonomy. Health can only flourish in a context of freedom and human dignity. As we have seen around the world, recently in Iran, any system which undermines human rights threatens health. When we encounter such systems, public health has a responsibility as a field to speak out. Sixth, we recognize that public health is about trade-offs. We all want to do what is right for health, but sometimes there are no ideal options. We need to recognize the trade-offs inherent in the choices we make about health. This means, centrally, not letting the perfect be the enemy of the good in our decision-making. And finally, we celebrate what unites us rather than what divides us. In an age of partisanship, health remains a universal value. We all desire health for ourselves and for our children. Public health can serve as a unifying influence. Our engagement with the social determinants of health help integrate a better, healthier society. Now, the NOVA Institute defines its vision as this, a world where health is valued as our most basic and essential asset, and where people, places, and the planet flourish for the benefit of all. A world where health underlies all of society's decisions and actions, where the many interconnected determinants of well-being are recognized, and where we place greater value on integration, creativity, and wisdom. A world where people enjoy meaningful and fulfilling lives, no matter where on earth they live, work, or play. This, I think, suggests a deep awareness that we are deeply, profoundly connected, and that health is a product of this interconnectedness. This creates a common obligation in which we are all responsible for shaping a healthier world, both in the present and with an eye towards future generations. Everything we do matters. Each time we make a choice to address the drivers of poor health, we make the world better, not just for ourselves, but for those who will follow us. Thank you. Thank you for helping to advance this work. By engaging with complexity, guided by our values, we can build on the foundations we have laid to maximize the good we can do in pursuit of a healthier future. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this meeting. I very much look forward to hearing how the discussions and deliberations unfold.